if something bad should happen, you have to turn your foot back in before you can lift it to pull it out of the stirrup. But I turned my foot out. And I swung up into the saddle and I got my other foot in the other stirrup and I turned it out too. I did mention that wasn't good, right? Well, when you're breaking and working with thoroughbred and horses, you don't get no fancy grit and, and a box bridle stuff. You get a training halter and these big ropes that hang off the end. For the end purpose of our story, we're going to call those cords. So when I reached down and I took a hold of the cords, but the stable hand let loose to that poor beast and took off running, dove on the ground and rolled underneath the fence. Well, I figured him running and jumping on the ground and stirring up all that dirt must have spooked that poor horse because he jumped straight up into the air. And then he kicked his hind feet out behind him and he jerked his head down between his front forelegs and he spun a little bit to the left. And that took about one second. And then it got real exciting while I was holding on. And while I was holding on to that beast, I had noticed that some of the farmhands had gathered around the top rail. And they was a yelling encouraging things to me like, hold on there, squeeze with your knees, pull his head out. Well, I thought that was really good for fellows that just barely knew me. But then I heard the other fellows, and they were saying other things like, knock him off him there, Ed. Throw him in the dirt, Ed. Show him who's boss on this farm, Ed. Well, you know, all the time during the introduction, I never once said my name was Ed. A fellow would remember if he did something like that, and I never did. So instantly, I realized that half of these folks was a cheering for me, and half was cheering for this horse named Ed. Well, right then, I determined that there was no way in the world that this Ed horse was going to throw me into the dirt. Now, that's not to say that I never got tossed into the dirt. If I was going to say that, once again, you'd be thinking I was running for Congress or something. But this Ed horse never did. And I must have impressed Mark because he kept me working for him for about six years. And I was doing about three horses a week, and he was paying me $65 a horse. And that's pretty good pay for a fellow not quite old enough to drive yet. Now, that's not to say I didn't drive every day to work. It just said that it wasn't quite old enough to drive. But I worked for him for about three years until our house and farm burned down and we had to move away. Now my wife says that was the biggest blessing we ever got was to have the house burned down because then we got to meet. But I had forgotten all about riding horses and how much fun I had until just a few years ago. And I remembered all the excitement I had with the ponies. But one of the things about breaking thoroughbreds is you don't want to break them until there's no spirit left in them. So when the jockey comes along to do whatever jockeys are supposed to do, there's spirit enough in the poor horse to do it. But if the jockey didn't introduce himself to the horse first, and that, that's really important, the introduction part, they would get up in that little tiny, teeny, tiny saddle and the horse would just give a little jump kick and poor jockey would be laying in the mud someplace and they'd always accuse me of not doing my job proper. I always wanted to be a jockey. You know, but at that time I was five foot seven, same height I am right now. <laughs> that was exactly six inches too tall to be a jockey. And I weighed 135 pounds and that was 30 pounds too much to be a jockey. I never got to be no jockey. But when they would accuse me of not doing my job, I would always say, well, if I was paid big dollars to sit on that horse and make him go fast, the first thing I would do is make sure I could sit on the horse. <laughs> well, I went to one of these horse rental places and found me a horse that looked like it had a lot of life in it. Had a little glitter in his eye. Now, it wasn't no thoroughbred, just a quarter horse. I want to remember that. That'll come in handy right at the end. Nobody told me nothing about rental horses. 
and I didn't ask nobody any questions about horse rental horses. Nobody mentioned the fact that the introduction was just as important to these horse rental ponies as it was to the thoroughbreds. Well, I got my foot in the stirrup and I turned it out like I used to always do. I did mention that's not a good thing, didn't I? Well, when I started to swing up into the saddle, that beast broke into a full gallop. And I never did get my other foot over into the other stirrup where it was supposed to be. It was kind of drooped over the back end of that thing. And both hands wrapped around his neck and I was holding on for dear life. And that horse was like it had the bit in his mouth and was headed for the barn. Well, I figured the onlyest thing I should do was let loose with one hand, grab a handful of mane, pull myself back up into the saddle, where I could get control of this beast. Well, when I let loose with one hand, that was my second mistake. You see, I fell right off that horse. Well, all of me except for that one foot that I had so carefully put in the stirrup and turned out. I did mention that's not a good thing, didn't I? <laughs> and here I was being drugged behind that horse. And every time its hooves would touch the ground, my shoulders would whack into that hard pavement. And I had to hold my head up to keep it from getting smashed into that ground. And that's when I noticed the hoof. It was coming right straight at me. I had to duck as it whizzed past my ear. <laughs> And I said that one of two things has to happen. Either this horse has to get extremely tired really fast, or I can never forget to duck. And it was right about then that Bob seen the situation that I was in. Now, you guys might have met Bob. He used to be one of our senior greeters at the Kenwick Walmart store. He seen the dilemma that I was in, and he raced over to where I was. Well as fast as he could race. And he eased up alongside that beast and got his hand around that cord and he wrapped it around his cord and he braced himself and he gave it a big jerk. And he unplugged that beast from the wall and saved my life. <laughs> <laughs>